Hi, I'm Tim Polero. And I'm Tyler Hoffman. And welcome back to Nauset News. All right, first up, I have some announcements. Seniors. Uh, every year, seniors walk to Nauset Light Beach to have their class photo taken. This year, it is scheduled for October 18th during last block. The senior class will meet in the auditorium at 1.35 for a brief meeting and then proceed to walk to the beach. Seniors should wear their senior t-shirt and some comfy shoes. Oyster Fest. Volunteers are needed. Wellfleet SBAT needs help with, recycling, with the recycling area at the 18th Wellfleet Oyster Fest Saturday, 10.13 and 10.14, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Each volunteer gets free parking at a Wellfleet Beach shuttle into town, uh, free admission and three food or drink tickets, $15 each, uh, to use anywhere at the fest. Please contact Katie Cushman uh, at volunteer at wellfleetsbat.org or call at 508-246-7079. Lastly, some important dates for homecoming. Homecoming week is Monday, uh, October 15th through Friday, October 19th. Homecoming dance is Saturday, October 20th. The Powder Puff game is Monday, October 15th. And now for some Spirit Week categories. Uh, so Monday, the 15th is the color clash. Seniors are pink, juniors are blue, sophomores are red, freshmen purple, and staff are tie-dye. Tuesday, October 16th is pajama day. Wear your pajamas. Uh, Wednesday, October 17th is decades day. The seniors get the 90s. Uh, juniors are 70s, sophomores 80s, freshmen 60s, and staff are current teens. Uh, Thursday, October 18th is movie day. Dress up as your favorite movie character. And lastly, Friday, October 19th, is Black and Gold Day. And that's all for the announcements, and now on to Tyler with the lineup. Thanks. First up, the top story done by Thomas Schultz. Next on to the High Five Student of the Week, done by Victoria Valentino, done by Kylie Shelley. Next on to Talent Search, which will be done by Sam Cipro. Then the health tip about fall allergies with Doug and Artie. Then there'll be Sports by Ava Berardi and Kylie Shelley. Things to do with Ben Morgan, a special report done by Quinn Miller about the Real Run 5K, Around the World by Eli Patrick, and then Student Council Updates with Isabel Merle, and then the College Notebook done by Jordan Auer. Then to finish off this week's Nauset News, we have an extra story about homecoming done by myself and my fellow Tim. Thank you, and now on to the top story. Hello. I'm Thomas Schultz, and I'm here today with your top story. Today's top story is about the Kindness Rocks. I'm here today with Ms. Timmons. Hi, Thomas. The Nosset Art Club and the Nosset Social Club are collaborating on a project to replenish the high school's Kindness Rock uh, a garden. Now, let's talk to Ms. Timmons, uh, the organizer of the Car Kindness Rocks uh, project. Tell me, Hi, Thomas. how did this project first come about? Well, some students actually two years ago started a Kindness Rocks garden out between the auditorium and the B building. So we have a small Kindness Rocks garden now. And it's a national project. It got started by a woman actually from Cape Cod many years ago. So there are Kindness Rocks all over the country, all over the world actually. Now, what is the purpose of this project? Well. Kindness gardens get established so that uh, the people that create the gardens can write messages of inspiration and hope. And the idea behind it is that if you're having a tough day and you get a message of hope, it can change your day. And the whole idea behind it is kindness, of course. So students in our high school are encouraged to either add a rock to the garden if they have one, or take one if they need one, things like that. What do you think this project will bring in Osset High? Well, this year we noticed that, um, you know, we have maybe 100 rocks in the garden now. We want to have 250 more rocks in the garden. So Social Club, which you know about, is going to collaborate, as you said, with the Art Club. And just today I found out that some of the science classes are going to take some field trips and they're going to bring beach rocks back for the project. And um, Another club is going to join us, um, the cross, girls' cross-country team is going to join us to paint rocks. So it's get, it, people are getting together on it, and it's a lot of fun. 
What type of rocks are you looking for? Well, we're asking all students uh, to bring in a beach rock and put them in the collection box by Miss LaBranche's attendance office. And we're looking for, you know, rock that would fit into one hand, so about that size, not gigantic rocks. And, um, you know, sort of smooth so that a message could be written on it. Are you accepting suggestions for the messages? Well, it'll be up to the individual student what message they want to write. Um, so after we collaborate with the art club and we get a base coat of paint on all the rocks the first week in November, then we're going to have an opportunity for all students in the high school to write their own message. Um, so students can really write, you know, what feels right to them. And what's been done so far in our Kindness Rocks Garden is pretty amazing. So I don't know. I think students don't need any ideas, but, um, you know, we'll always take suggestions. What is the main goal for this project? To promote the idea of kindness. You know, who could argue with that? The world needs more kindness, right? Right. The Art and Social Club will meet together on November 1st and to paint a base coat on the rocks. If any other club would like to join us, please contact Ms. Timmons or Mrs. Campbell. During the week of November 5th, all students in the school now we'll have an opportunity to use special uh, weatherproof uh, paint pens and to add positive messages to our rocks. Our goal for the Kindness Rocks is to collect 250 rocks uh, for this year. And if the students could participate in collecting r blank rocks, uh, we would uh, be very appreciated. I'm Thomas Schultz, and this has been your top story. Now, here. now here's Kylie Shelley with the High Five Student of the Week. Hi, I'm Kylie Shelley and this week's High Five of the Week is Victoria Valentino. She is the Senior Class Secretary and also a member of the Mock Trial Team. So what are your duties as Secretary? Um, as the Class Secretary, I take notes at all the meetings and I make sure that all the class documents are accessible to all the students and are formatted correctly and I also um, do a lot of administrative work for getting fundraising forms in, getting fundraisers passed, and then um, making sure like everything comes in on time and it's distributed properly. How long have you been the sec secretary? Um, I was the class senator for my freshman and sophomore year, and then I ran for secretary and won um, my junior and senior year. That's cool. What are your goals as a senior class secretary? Um, as the class secretary, I really want to make prom accessible and affordable to everyone and to make sure that fundraisers happen as efficiently as possible so that can happen. Do you have any thoughts about homecoming? Um, I think that homecoming is going to be a little different from this year. Like homecoming week is going to be a little different than last year, but I think it's going to be really fun this year. So, any sneak peeks? Um, I don't know of any <laughs> sneak okay. peeks, but. Tell us more about the mock trial. Um, so we're a competitive team that competes with Monomoy and Barnstable um, in like the prelim rounds and then we go on to like regional rounds if we win and we get a case from the American Bar Association and the Mass Bar Association that we come up with a case for and then like present our case in front of a judge. So do you have any college plans? Talk to um, us about college. Yeah, so I have some college plans. Um, School just yeah, I really like U University of Vermont and U UMass Amherst and Clark University, but I'm just working on getting my applications in and settled. So we'll cross that bridge when it comes. <laughs> Do you know what you want to major or minor in? Um, I'm not positive, but I'm really interested in like humanities and political science. But I also I'm also interested in like ecology studies and environmental studies. I know you said you talk, you looked at multiple colleges, but what's your top one like, as of right now? My top college as of right now is University of Vermont. I like this one. It's really <laughs> Well, I think that's all for today. Thanks for watching. I'm Kylie Shelley, and this is Victoria, Victoria Valentino. This will be High Five of the Week. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Artie O'Neill. And I'm Doug Bazile With the Health Tip of the Week. This week, we'll be talking about fall allergies and how to prevent them. In the fall, ragweed is the biggest allergy trigger. Ragweed usually starts to release pollen with cool nights and warm days in August and can last into September and October. 
About 75% of people allergic to spring plants also have reactions to the pollen released by ragweed. Mold is another very common trigger for allergies. Mold doesn't only grow in your basement or on your food. It also grows outside in wet spots, such as clumps of leaves. To prevent mold, look out for clumps of leaves or foliage after a rainy night and dispense of them. Some of the common symptoms of fall allergies are as follows. Watery eyes, sneezing, coughing, itchy nose and eyes, dark circles under the eyes, and runny noses. If you have any of these symptoms and they do not go away in about a week's time, please contact your local doctor. Hey Doug, I've noticed you've been sneezing a lot. Do you have fall allergies? Yeah, I'm allergic to pollen, but I was prescribed medication for my allergies, so I'm, now I'm all fine. That's great. Hopefully your medication will last throughout the season. Thank you. Thank you for watching this week's edition of the Health Tip of the Week. I'm Doug Bazile. And I'm Artie O'Neill. See you next time. Hello, I'm Ms. Morrell here with this week's Student Council Report. The Student Council just recently had their first faculty party of the year on September 28th. This fall-themed event went great and all of the teachers were very appreciative. The Council has been busy at work planning Homecoming Week and all of its festivities. Homecoming week will be October 15th through the 19th, and the Spirit Days have been chosen. Look out for them next to Mrs. LaRanch's office and in the cafeteria on the large green TVs. Monday, October 15th will be Color Clash. Seniors are pink, juniors are blue, sophomores are red, freshmen are purple, and staff is tie-dye. Tuesday, October 16th will be Pajama Day. Dress up in your favorite pajamas. Wednesday, October 17th will be Decades Day. Seniors are 90s, juniors are 70s, sophomores are 80s, freshmen are 60s, and staff is today's teens. Thursday, October 18th will be movie day. Dress up as your favorite movie character. And finally, Friday, October 19th will be black and gold day. Now for some information about pep rally. Sports teams and clubs, if you're interested in making a banner or putting together a pre-recorded skit for pep rally, please contact student council at nossetschools.org. Anyone is welcome to submit a pre-recorded skit for Pep Rally. Please submit your skit also to NASA, or student council at nasaschools.org. Skits must be submitted by October 15th, and banner requests are due by October 5th. Now, some for, now for some information about the Powder Puff game. It will be up Monday, October 15th. Homecoming tickets will be sold for $10 at the Powder Puff game. And look out for information on participating in your school email. In regards to the homecoming dance, it will be Saturday, October 20, 20th, starting around 7.30. And homecoming tickets will be sold for $15 at all three lunches or buy them at the Pirate game. That's all for this week. Thank you for watching. I'm Ms. Morrell and have a great weekend. Hello, I'm Ava Berardi and welcome to NASA News. I'm Kylie Shelley and this is your sports update. In cross country news, the, boy, the NASA boys and girls cross country team hosted Marshfield at home September 25th. The boys lost the game, but took first place overall. Jake Pearl ran away with the victory by over one minute. Also running well for the boys were Jeremiah Pranga, Finn Riley, and Cameron Beer. For girls cross country, Nauset was victorious, beating the Rams by a slim margin of five points. Rachel Pranga had an outstanding performance as she beat excuse me, <coughs> Marshfield's number one runner, out sprinting her in the last half mile of the race. Also scoring points for Nauset was Abby Farrell, Ella Kelly and Izzy Nobley, Hannah Brunel, and Hannah Brunel. The girls remain undefeated and are looking to clinch the ACL title this season. Tough competition ahead will be DY High School and Sandwich. For football, the varsity team had a great victory against Marshfield Friday night, September 28th, at home. Nauset won 21 to 13. McLebarge had an outstanding game. For golf, the Nasa golf team won the Vineyard Golf Invitational at September 30th in Edgartown. Nasa beat Sandwich by 13 and Martha's Vineyard by 19. Miles Walther had the best score of the day and Will Campbell close behind. Also playing well for Nasa was Liam O'Hara and Parker Cameron. For girls field hockey, Nasa defeated Mash Mashpee 9-0 on Monday, October 1st at home. Um, sorry, Eliza Stevens had a hat trick and goalies Emily Cavanaugh and Sarah Foley split time in the net. In soccer, the girls' soccer team beat DY 3-0 on the road October 1st. 
Shannon McSor Mc sorry, McSorley scored two goals while Aquina Rank scored one. Earning the shutout in the net was Jamie Rushnack. Boys soccer beat DY 7-0 on Friday night, September 28th at home. Cormac Parker had two goals as the Warriors solidified their state tournament berth with the victor victory. The Nauset boys remain undefeated as of this broadcast. They will go after the ACL title again. Also playing well for the Warriors was Abdel Tabli Tab sorry, Tal Talaby, <laughs> Benny LeBranch, and goalkeeper Jack Avalar. This has been your Nauset News Update. I'm Eva Berardi. And I'm Kylie Shelley. Hello, I'm Jordan Hauer, and I have this week's college notebook. This week, we'll be traveling to the college campuses located in the center of our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. George Washington University is located only a few blocks away from the White House. Many students attending this university are given the opportunity to intern and work for govern government officials and administrators. When the students are not in class and want to relax, they can take a short walk to many shops and restaurants. Lily Merle graduated in Osset last year and is attending GW as a freshman this year. Next, American University is also located in Washington, D.C. Isabel Pellegrini is studying at American as a freshman this year. By attending college here, many young political activists are able to voice their opinions and take place in many marches. American is considered the most politi politically active school in the nation and is full of political diversity. They also offer over 200 student clubs, which allows everyone to get involved within their school. If you ever get the opportunity to travel to D.C., you should visit the Georgetown shops located right by Georgetown University. Elena O'Connor, who graduated last year, is attending Georgetown. The, this university was established in 1789 and is full of history and notable alumni. They are best known for their law school and have many student-run businesses on campus. Thank you so much for watching this week's segment of College Notebook. I hope you'd enjoy learning about the variety of universities in the D.C. area. I'm Jordan Hour, and I hope you have a great weekend. Hello, my name is Eli Patrick, and I'm telling you about what's happening around the world. First off, Dutch police recently in the town of Arnhem arrested seven men that were found conspiring for terrorism. They were found with assault rifles, bomb vests, and loads of ammunition. They were found uh, following a few-month investigation. Then, back in the U.S., Government Securities and Exchange Commission have removed Elon Musk from his chairman seat over at the company Tesla over a simple tweet, but they, uh, they labeled it over security fraud and false statements to the, make the company private. On our lighter side, two Syrian refugees in Canada were donated copious amounts of land from a gen uh, very generous Calgary men in which they plan on being able to uh, contribute to their community and continue farming like they did back in their home country. That's all I have for you today. My name is Eli Patrick, and this was your Around the World News. I'm Quinn Miller for the Nosset News with Catherine Huntley from Lower Cape TV. And they're starting a run called the Real Run, that's R-E-E-L, like a film reel. And it's going to benefit the Eddy Elementary School in Brewster and their uh, Kids News 22. And for the run, when is it? The run is October 21st. So it's a Halloween sort of run? It's a Halloween fun run. So it's a 5K, it'll be in the National Seashore, but we do encourage people to show up with their costumes because we'll be giving out prizes for the best costumes. All right, and it's here at the high school? Yeah, it's at the high school. It starts and ends at the high school. It'll be running down Cable Road, down through the seashore, and back up. And we got it to be just 5K, exact 5K. All right, is there anything else you want to add? Yeah, there is a kids' run that kids can sign up for, and that's a mile run. So we hope people will show up, and everybody, again, can bring costumes. All right, this was Nelson News. I'm Quinn Miller. This is Catherine Huntley. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sam Cipro with Bethy, Drew, and Mason with the Talent Search. So, what do you guys think of your class in photography? I like it. It's yeah, a good it's class. Really, it's really you get fun. to be very creative. Can you elaborate on that? You can take pictures of whatever you want for the projects that you have. It lets you branch out into whatever kind of subject that you want to shoot. You know. Mm -hmm. So, what what is what have you gained from this class, and how does it bring out your inner photographer? It like kind of gives you like a new perspective on how to look at things. Like some and, people like, might new ways to take pictures that you may not have done before. Uh, just different settings on the camera and stuff, and getting better at that. So, if you guys were to try to endorse this class, what would you say about it to other kids? 
Um, I would tell them that it's a great class, they should definitely take it. Great teacher, learn a lot. I think it's really fun. It's a good break from, like, if you have like, a hard schedule, it's a good break, but you still get to learn things mm -hmm. about like photography, which is really cool. So, Bethy, what's your favorite part of photography? Um, I like when we get to like, go outside and take pictures. It's just nice to be able to walk around outside and like find subjects that are usually something that people take pictures of, I guess. Mm -hmm. How about you, Drew? Uh, I also like when we walk, but I like like when we walk to the beach or to the lighthouses. How about you, Mason? It's a nice break from school and your rigorous classes, but you know, you still get to learn, you're still in school. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you guys. It's been Sam Cipro with Bethy, Drew, and Mason as our talent search. Hello, I'm Ben Morgan with Things to Do, Activities and Events. Sunday, October 7th, Fine Arts and Craft Show at Drummer Boy Park in Brewster from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Sunday and um, Saturday and Sunday, October 13th and 14th, Symphony at the Disco. There are two shows at 3 p.m. or 7.30 p.m. The shows will take place at Cape Symphony on Falmouth Road in Hyannis. Also on October 13th and 14th is the annual Wolfweed Oyster Fest. You'll see me competing going head-on against Keith Rose and many other champions. There is a lot of local food, great shops. You're going to love it. There's drinks and live performances, including the contest. I'm going to be there, and you'll find me on stage. Thursday, November 1st is Ladies' Night Out at Conference Center in Hyannis from 5 to 8 p.m. On hand will be a psychic medium named Rachel Perrier. You can get her, your tickets at capecodtimes.com. For movies, receiving four stars is Leave No Trace, a movie about a war vet and his daughter and their adventures in the woods, which at times turn into life-threatening conditions, starring Ben Foster. And then we have Puzzle. The critics gave this one three stars about a Connecticut housewife who discovers she's quite savvy at jigsaw puzzles. She enters a tournament and teams up with a dashing stranger starring Kelly McDonald. A Simple Favor gets three and a half stars from the critics. It's a comedy thriller about two vastly different moms befriend each other. As the movie unfolds, one of the moms disappears, starring Blake Lively and Anna Kendrick. That is all I have for things to do. Be sure to go to these events or films and have a nice day. Signing up, Ben Morgan. Hello, I'm Ben Morgan with Nosset News. I'm getting ready for the Wolfleet Shuck Off, and I need a lovely assistant. Kylie, will you come up? I've been trucking in oysters since I was six for around 12 years. I recently uh, took up competitive shucking last year at the Wolfleet Oyster Fest. What first inspired you? Well, I got the idea from Keith Rose, and, uh, well, I work at an oyster bar, and uh, they said I was a fast guy, and I decided to see how fast can I go. Do you remember your first time shucking an oyster? Yep. I probably got stitches that day. Uh, it's recommended to have a glove or a towel when it comes to opening oysters. The way I like to do is at the side. The way to do it is a side entry. You slide the knife into the side of the shell, not the hinge. You got right in there. And uh, you gotta wipe off any debris. You can quickly wipe out. It's a penalty if it's not cleanly wiped out. Can you do another one slower so we can see it better? Sure thing. So what you do is uh, you wiggle it in and twist it left and right. You always gotta chunk up on the tip of your knife. Alright. Would you like me to demonstrate the contest? Sure. So what you do is, there is a timer right here, and uh, what you have to do is that uh, it's recommended to bring a backup knife. <laughs> this one I've had since I was six, and this one I got from a good man, Chopper Young. I use it for every contest. So when it comes to a contest, you gotta line them up all nice and neat, and just, when they tell you to start chucking, you start chucking. So how many do you have to do to get that Two dozen.
And also it's important to line them all up nice and neat. So that way if you mutilate any oysters or anything, they can redirect points for a nice arrangement. And trying to make sure the arrangement is nice and neat. Judges always want to see that. Now, when it comes to oysters, you can pair it with different wines or different drinks. You can get them uh, with lemon juice or hot sauce or cocktail sauce. I like them uh, with a little lemon juice. Kylie, would you like one? I would love one. Now, when it comes to oysters, what's crucial is the brine. The brine is the juice. If an oyster doesn't have any brine, it just tastes bland and slimy. It's crucial. It really gives the oyster its flavor. Am I right? Mmm. Sure. It's How is it? <laughs> How now is you have it? to try it with hot sauce and lemon. Yep. There's still some left. I'm using the same one. Seriously, I swore I cut the bottom of it. That's another thing. They'll give you a head. Though, add uh, extra time if you forget to cut the bottom of the shell, believe it or not. It's crucial to make sure every oyster is as perfect as possible, like this. I try and go for quality over quantity, depending on the rounds. Like Sam, I'm going to ha we're going to have our first oyster together. Aww. Bottoms up. <laughs> well, how are you going to see your mouth? <laughs> Salty. Oh, well, I'm Ben Morgan. My stage name is Ben the Butcher. Come find me at the Wolfleet Oyster Fest. It takes place uh, behind Town Hall. And I'll be there shucking in the contest, going head to head against Keith Rose, the first ever Wolfleet champion. Hello, I'm Tyler Hoffman, and for tonight's extra story, we will be talking about the upcoming Homecoming Dance. It's going to be held on a Saturday, October 20th, and the time will be around 7.30. And I've known in past years uh, the upperclassmen don't normally go, but I've heard a lot of hype around this upcoming dance, and hopefully it'll be a lot of fun. And especially I've heard from my sister, who is a freshman, she is on the cross-country team, and that whole team has been getting very excited for the homecoming dance to dance and have a lot of fun. So now let's go on to see what some other people think about the dance. Hi, I'm Carter. Uh, I'm going to the homecoming this Saturday. Or next Saturday. Uh, this is going to be my first high school dance, so I'm pretty excited. I'm looking forward to going there. Yeah. Hello, I'm Owen White, a freshman at Nauset Regional High School, and I'm hoping to go to homecoming this year as my first high school dance. Please go and have some fun. I'm here with a few members of the student council. What are your thoughts on the homecoming dance? So this year we heard a lot of complaints about the music, so we're getting a new DJ and we're going to have the students uh, submit song suggestions through a Google form and then they'll make a playlist through that. So hopefully the students really like the music this year. Um, for other things, we're going to have a photo booth this year again because that did really well last year. Um, we're also going to have food and refreshments.